What resort holds the distinction of being the third oldest property still standing on the Las Vegas Strip? And when will it close its doors forever and be scheduled for the wrecking ball? Today, we are staying at the fabled Tropicana for one last time to relive all our memories and share them with you. Plus, for the very last time, we're doing dinner and a show. So get ready, because this adventure starts right now. It was Tuesday, February 6th, that we packed up an overnight bag and headed to the Strip. By now, the excitement of the Super Bowl is a hazy memory. The blue skies were trying to overcome the rain as we turned onto the boulevard and into the Tropicana for maybe the last time. Its owner, Bally's Corporation, has announced that it will cease operations on April 2nd. Well, we are at the Tropicana we're gonna stay one more night. This will be the last time we'll probably end up in the Tropicana unless they have some kind of a thing where you can buy stuff later before they tear it all down. But we're gonna spend the night, so I'm gonna get the suitcase out. We are we are gonna reminisce about old times. We're gonna reminisce about when I played in the lounge in there. And uh, just gonna bring back some old memories. As a matter of fact, when I first came here, uh, the Musicians Union, uh, 369, was just almost next door to the Tropicana. And uh, I'm gonna try to get over there if I can, it's raining like crazy, and just see if that building is still there. I'm not sure it is, but that's where it was. And the memories just keep flowing the minute I come over and I see this hotel. A quick stop at the front desk for check-in, and we are off to the 15th floor for a nostalgic overnight stay. Oh, we're on the 15th floor here at uh, Tropicana. We are in room 1592, this is a mini suite. Let's go check it out. Hey, welcome to the trap one last time. Yes, my friends. And normally I do this as a voiceover, but I wanted to do this live as I'm looking at it. This is just uh, sort of a smaller suite, but it is a suite. 450 square feet. Yeah. And it, it is not, it's not bad, I'll tell you what. For two people, it really is nice. It's kind of old and vintage-y, you know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's got that bamboo look like it had years ago in the old uh, garden suites and stuff like that. Humongous uh, queen-size bed. And we have, what's down here? That it, radio. Talk about vintage. Talk about vintage. Look at that radio. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> you can see what I'm talking about. Look at this. The, with, the, with the bamboo. I mean, this is old. This is old Tropicana. And believe me, this is old Tropicana, my friends, because... Uh, they're not going to redo these rooms at all. Plus, the wallpaper is also very tropical. You can see we got Palm some leaves. light coming in. There's the TV, little credenza there. They don't offer uh, coffee or anything, but they do have a little table here, which is a nice work, work table. And I think we might sit at that and talk a little bit. What do we got? Looks like a safe. All right, we got a nice safe. I wondered if there was a fridge, but there isn't. And then just no. the doors. Yeah. yeah, and. Your typical coffee cups and a, I assume those are free. Let's see. It says Tropicana on it. It's going home with me, I'll tell you that. <laughs> nice table. You can actually hear the airport because the airport's right next door. And I like this sitting area that we're standing in. There's only one chair, unfortunately. Well, I guess we could use the desk chair. It's kind of cozy. Yeah, it's, it's not bad. It's a nice little chair. It's better than not having a chair. Let's talk dollars and cents. This was another one of our really, really last minute decisions, but we decided as time went on, it might be hard to get into the Tropicana, especially at the price that we got it, so we jumped. We paid $74 for this mini suite, and then with the $15 tax and $37 resort fee, $126 out the door, and it is a Tuesday evening right before the Super Bowl and honestly I can't think of a more exciting place I'd rather be than right here at the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard and Tropicana. Tropicana was one of the first places I ever played when we were here. That lounge of course is gone but uh, the, the bones of this place is still alive 
and uh, in a couple months it's not going to be here anymore, and I'm going to be very sad, and I wanted to come down one last time just to stay in a room, right, and, and exactly. just check it out. Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. yeah, one more time at yeah. the TROP. And the front desk agent, she was so sweet. She told us to go downstairs and ask if they'd give us a deck of cards, make sure we go in the gift shop. We're going to pick up a chip. We're just going to see what kind of memorabilia we can take home with us. Yeah, and uh, we already did a history on the Tropicana. Oh, yeah. So we'll put a link to that in the bottom. Right now, this video is basically just for us. And we're just bringing you guys along because I just want to relive some old memories. I'm even going to try out where the old, try to find out, like I said in the intro, where the old uh, Musicians Union used to be, Local 369. It's now on, uh, what's the road? Duke Ellington Way. It always was. No, but what's the road it's on now? It's in Oh, the, it's way up on Vegas way Drive in kind of a yucky neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, stick with us. We are going to get started. Get ready because we're going downstairs. Along the hallway back to the main casino is the Glow Spa. And a peek at the iconic island wedding chapel nestled among the palms. It really is charming inside here. Most of this long hallway though affords you great views of Tropicana's famous pool deck. It's a free-form pool set in two lush acres and has always been considered one of the resort's best features. From this side, you get a view of the waterfalls and the lawn area. And from the opposite windows, the northern arm of the pool, the waterfall pond, and the remains of the Sky Beach Club. We're at the pool area right now. When we used to come here years ago, we loved coming down to the pool area. They had a walk up, uh, I mean, a swim up place where you could actually do play craps, I think, or maybe it was 21. Blackjack. Yeah, blackjack. This, if you can just look this down here on this, this I believe used to be a pool with water in it. And I think they had uh, uh, ducks and things like that in it. But follow me over here, okay, Paul? Let's walk, uh, just pointing at that up there. These are the garden rooms. This is, of course, the pool side. That's good. This is the pool side. On the other side of that, it actually faced Tropicana Avenue. And we th that's where we used to stay all the time. And you know what I lo love to do? I would do there, be there until 2 or 3 in the morning. I would sit on the patio just watching the people go by and watching Las Vegas. I love this town so much. I, this was my favorite place to come because you could actually get close to the people in your room. And it was just a wonderful, wonderful time. Am I right, Paul? That I did. I would stay down. I would stay outside. Third floor. Yeah, third floor. Uh, two or three o'clock in the morning because I didn't want to. I didn't want to miss any of it. This was before even New York. New York was there. It was just MGM. And after as well. Yeah, and after as well. And MGM Grand, of course. And of course, MGM Grand, which is across the street, used to be the uh, marina. And I played in the marina. And uh, then, of course, instead of tearing it down, they made it a part of M uh, MGM Grand. So. The, the history around here is so unique, and it's all. Gonna, we're not going to be able to stand here anymore when they put the baseball park. We're not going to be able to stand here, smell this air, smell these flowers, r reminisce about about um, the animals because there were animals in here. You see those uh, uh, windows with the uh, the the uh, fences? Yeah, fencing. Anyway, they used to have a whole bunch of peacocks here. And the peacocks would fly up there, and if you had a room there, you could wake up to a peacock in your room if you opened up your door. It was so magical down here with all the all the animals and uh, the, the flying animals and the ducks. And a lot of the animals or flying birds flew in here because it, when they were migrating, this was a great place to stop. I mean, my gosh, look around. This place is amazing. All right, I just wanted to show you the pool for one last time. It's kind of a crummy day out here and it's very dark. I hope you can see it all, but I hope you can feel my enthusiasm and my love for this place. I really do love this place. Uh, I don't know what else we're gonna be able to see because a lot of the stuff is closed down. That place, uh, the garden rooms are shut down. You can't even walk down the hall anymore. So we're gonna see as much as we can and uh, I'm not sure where we're going next, but we're gonna go right now. All right, as you can see, this area is closed up. This was the big part of the uh, pool area. And boy, years ago, it was amazing. They had an unbelievable waterfall over on the other side. 
But if you look in that little alcove over there, if you can point over there, Paula, in the center, that's where they used to do the uh, swim up blackjack table. The first thing that comes to mind when you hear talk about demolishing the trop is this the fabulous stained glass ceiling above the tables area. It's literally the first thing you see when you come in the front doors and it is spectacular. 4,250 square feet, installed in 1979 at a cost of $1 million, and credited with changing the texture of design in Las Vegas. In the You Learn Something New Every Day department, it turns out the best view of the ceiling is actually upstairs by the Laugh Factory. <laughs> Absolutely stunning from up there. We popped into the gift shop looking for mementos to take home. Found a few clothing items, but we chose this. Should I buy it? Show the people. Let me see the whole thing. Lift it up. He's very cute. I, I don't know I, why a monkey, maybe because he's tropical. I gotta buy it. I think you gotta buy it. I gotta it. buy it, Cause just for that alone. I know, I agree. Right, I'm gonna go buy go it. Go for it. I bought it. <laughs> I bought it. <laughs> this being a Tuesday, the Tropicana Theater was dark. And so was the really elegant looking Trago Lounge. I would have loved to sit there with an adult beverage and reminisce under that unique ceiling. Now this was really interesting. Bally's runs a YouTube channel called Big Bet Poker Live and they were playing in this little studio. Hello my friends. Well, as I said earlier, it's a Tuesday and Tuesday means there are very limited choices if you want to eat something. It is late for us. We are ready for lunch slash dinner. So we are at Robert Irvine's Public House and this is a place, honestly, I always wanted to try so I better hurry up and do it, right? Um, got myself a tanqueray and tonic and my better half, of course, got himself a nice draft beer. They're doing a lively business in here for a rainy Tuesday, and the menu looks delicious. If you happen to cross the pedestrian bridge from the MGM Grand, you will land right here at Robert Irvine's Public House. It opened here in 2017, the last big high-profile opening at the property. Public House is nearly 9,000 square feet with a warm and authentic pub-like atmosphere and comfort food on the menu. The dining room seats 275, and the wraparound bar is honestly the most inviting bar in the building. It's a top spot for happy hour daily specials and for great food stuffed inside a bun. Look at this, this is amazing. This is blackened salmon with some kind of butter sauce on top. I got broccolini, I got white rice, which has some kind of a butter sauce inside of it. I asked for it well done, and it looks well done. Let me just take a real quick bite, and then we'll get over to Paula's food. It's gonna be hot. Oh, that is superb. Absolutely superb. Let me just take a bite of this. Really, really good. Really, really good. Let's go check out what Paula has. Well, I went for a sandwich. This is a chicken sandwich. I, it's going to be a two-hander. Take a look at that, everybody. It's a lemon seasoned chicken. I've got bacon, lettuce, tomato, onion. It's going to be a big mess. I'm taking a bite. Mm. They grilled the toast. Fantastic. Oh man, I love it. Garlicky heaven. 
well, this is not normally how we do dessert, but we actually filmed it, and for some reason the sound didn't work. This is creme brulee cheesecake, or I should say, what's left of creme brulee cheesecake. <laughs> it's traditional New York cheesecake that they then um, burn the top like creme brulee and uh, garnish it with a few pieces of fruit and a little bit of caramel drizzle, and it was out of this world delicious. Loved it. So at dinner, Dale was asking me what memories and reminiscences I had about the Tropicana. I'm not a performer, I never played on stage here, but I remember the 90s as my favorite time here. That was the time that Tropicana had the tagline, Island of Las Vegas, and they really leaned into the tropical theming. They had just swaths of flowers in the front yard as well as in the pool area. It was so beautiful and vibrant. The palm trees were kind of unique to the trop in that era. And of course, we already talked about how great the pool area was, but I really loved it then. And of course, the Follies Berger was still performing nightly in the Tiffany Theater. So that's my favorite memory of the trop. I just left the ladies room on the casino floor and these huge framed photos just reinforce my memories of the Trop Pool in its heyday. Now, where do you suppose Dale went? The Tropicana's Casino is a smallish one by strip standards, less than 45,000 square feet, but what do you bet he found a Kino machine? Aha, where did I think I would find you? I'm gambling. Losing? Look at, that, look at I'm losing. Yeah, of course I'm losing. <laughs> I'm donating to the cause, you know? The Valleys does not need your money. Well, no, but the people that work here do need my money. In fact, we talked to a guy, bring that closer to me. We talked to a guy because uh, we're not sure. Well, I know that the people that work here are going to get some kind of a severance pay. And if you worked here a long time, I think you get $2,000 per year. So for every year here, of service. For every year right. of service. So if you worked, you know, 20 years here, you're going to get a pretty good chunk of, of change. So uh, we are talking to some of the people. They're very sad they're turned down. And I'm very sad they're turned down. But I'm going to play a little, couple more nickels. And I think I might win something here because Tropicana is my baby. I mean, I'm going to miss it more than anyone else. We wanted to see some entertainment while we were here, and the only option this evening was the Laugh Factory. So, we decided to head over to the box office and grab tickets to a legend in entertainment, the one and only Rich Little. Laugh Factory is a world-famous venue out of L.A. featuring A-list performers and rising stars. The Las Vegas location opened here in 2012. It's an intimate room where no seat is far from the stage and the walls are filled with memorabilia from the most famous names in comedy. When the lights come on after the show, we'll take a closer look. You're not going to believe this. Some of my portraits talk. I did some talking drawings. We've seen Rich Little before, but it seems fitting that we spend time with this show business legend right here at the Tropicana. He is in his 80s, and the show was part performance, part retrospective. After the show, the house lights came on, and we were able to capture the Rodney Dangerfield booth. the Martin and Lewis memorabilia in the display case. And behind the bar. Absolute legends. Over the years, we have spent endless amounts of time at this famous corner, Las Vegas Boulevard and Tropicana Avenue. Folks, after April 2nd, I don't know that we'll ever have this sweeping view of it again. 
It was the first intersection in town where pedestrian bridges were built and is home to more than 12,500 hotel rooms. All right, enough nostalgia. It's getting cold out here. Let's head back into the casino. Well, I found a bank of Kino machines here and I'm gonna play this, but I just thought of another memory. I worked in a lounge here in uh, the Tropicana and I remember, and I, I can't I remember the actual name. I thought it was the Blue Lounge, but I think I'm wrong. It was a, it was a ramp that went down and it sort of went into a pit. And then there was the, uh, what was the thing next to it, Paula? Tiffany Theater. Tiffany Theater was next to it. And I can remember when I uh, was going in for a sound check on there, Here's a little unknown fact about me. I used to do impressions. I did about six or seven impressions in my act, and it was they were all vocal and singing impressions. Anyway, they were doing a sound check, and I was doing uh, Kenny Rogers. And when I was done with it, the cocktail waitress who was way off on the other end, there was nobody in the place, she comes running over, and she goes, you sound just like Kenny Rogers. Okay, I gotta stop it right here. The reason it made such a big impression on me is because it was one of the first places I ever played in Las Vegas and somebody actually recognized that I could do an impression. That made me feel really good because anything else I had done was not in Las Vegas, was always on the road someplace. But to be recognized in Las Vegas, this was a big deal. And I kept it in my, my brain forever because I used to do those things. I could do Neil Diamond, better Neil Diamond, I'll tell you that. Let me let me just hit the button here. So that's one of my memories of being here in the Tropicana the first time. Also, I have already told this story. I did audition for the Follies Bergere, and of course they didn't take me because I left real quick before they had a chance to hear all of my talents. Truth be told, it was an open audition. I decided I'm gonna go down there, what the heck, let's see what happens. I uh, did the uh, singing and all that kind of stuff, but then they wanted to do dancing, and I can't dance, I can barely walk. So I shuffled off the buffalo out the back door, and that was the end of my Valley's Brazier career. So again, we're getting to the end of the night of this video, and uh, we're, we've been reminiscing all night. It's re we're really having a good time, and I'm really gonna be sad and sorry when the Tropicana gets tore down. Let's keep hitting the machine. Heading back to our room after our customary nightcap, we caught this glowing shot of the MGM. How gorgeous is this? My friends, you just gotta love Las Vegas. You know me, I'm a morning gal. Had to visit the casino and snap a few more pics, minus the people, before we check out. I also picked up a few casino chips at the cage to add to our pile of keepsakes, you know? And we will wrap up our last day at the Tropicana with a few moments at the corner once the morning sun returned to Las Vegas. In a unique twist of fate, the TROP opened its doors on April 4th, 1957, and will close them on April 2nd, 2024, almost 67 years to the day. I'll tell you what, no matter what happens next, we will always hold dear to our heart the great memories of the Tropicana. Well, my friends, I sure as heck hope you enjoyed walking down memory lane with the two of us little saps walking <laughs> through the Tropicana. <laughs> I, I apologize. Sometimes my, my mind goes a, a little bit faster than my mouth does, and I get things screwed up. You know, like forgetting to button my button. But uh, uh, my my passion for this for this hotel and this this property is uh, just as you can tell, it's overwhelming. <laughs> it is overwhelming, and the funny thing is, as most of you know, the Tropicana's closing has to do with the Oakland Athletics baseball team supposedly <laughs> taking over nine acres of that property and building a stadium. Can I just say something here? <laughs> sure. Uh, these people, <laughs> I think they're a little bit flaky. A flaky. Yeah, yes, because there, now there's a lot of back and forth. They're not so sure what's going on. In fact, you can read this, Paula. Read this for yeah, the folks. Well, this was in Thrillist earlier this week. This yeah, is from the president up, of the it. Oakland A's. Yeah. For us to build a ballpark on it, the entire site needs to be clean. There will be some type of implosion. 
Part of it will be taken down manually, but part of it will be imploded. That will be a big celebration, oh. a moment when people realize how big this is becoming. <laughs> well. So that was that was earlier this week. <laughs> and now there's some doubt and there's a lot of different drawings, but whatever. And then they're talking about Valley still would own then the other 26 acres. Trop is 35 acres in total. And they're going to build the new hotel, casino, and maybe something like right. the park, where it could be kind of a, a sporting, shopping, dining, you know, <laughs> whatever, thing, sort of like T-Mobile and whatever. Park. So, yeah. but you know, some of it it may never come to pass. Yeah, <laughs> we did this emotional video, and then all of a sudden, as we're, we're laughing, in the, we're in the middle of editing it, and I'm listening to the radio, and with the the, the radio is talking about, well, I wonder if this is going to happen. So oh, all we can say is stay tuned. It's an interesting saga. <laughs> but still, that does not take away my love for the Tropicana. No, and we hope we did it justice in just conveying how much that beautiful white tower means to us right. and the pool area and all the memories that we share at the Tropicana. We have a lot of keepsakes, not just this fella, but decks of cards and matchbooks and back in the day i used to take the stationery and the notepads and yeah you know, we have a lot well you said you saw that in you actually i saw that in the video because we got i put i put all that in there oh, you, you don't did? know yeah you don't know that awesome all right if you're not subscribed please subscribe don't forget to hit that notification button anything else you want to tell these nice people miss paul did you ever wonder how could the Tropicana be a double tree by Hilton and there's no chocolate chip cookies? What is with that? Hope you had a good time. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye, <laughs> <Bye>, everybody. everybody. <laughs>